Hey everyone, welcome to Math Talk. I'm your host, Brian Heisler, and today we're going to look at some number sense and some tips and tricks for comparing fractions and then also adding and subtracting fractions. More for fractions where the denominator is not the same. Um, so let's take a look at some examples. So I have a couple of fractions here and then we're asked to determine which fraction in each pair is greater. And so I know that this is a pretty common thing that would be helpful for the non-calculator section of the GED. I know there's some questions about ordering numbers and things like that. So if you can compare the value of fractions, it helps you in ordering them from least to greatest or greatest to least. And so some of these examples are super easy. Some of them are a little bit trickier, um, but let's look at a little trick you can use to compare the value of fractions. So in our first example, it's really easy because if the denominators are the same, then all you have to do is compare the numerators, the top number. And so obviously two is bigger than one, so this fraction is bigger than the other one. Two fourths is more than one fourth, all right? My next example, I have eight thirteenths versus four sevenths. Well, those are really uncommon fractions, and so, you know, Typically, one of the ways you can do is find a common denominator and then find the numerator that makes it equivalent to fractions and all that, and then you compare them, but that's a lot of work. So here's a little trick to help you with comparing the value of fractions. You can do what's called cross-multiplying. If you cross-multiply these values like this and kind of go up diagonally and find the product, so 7 times 8 is 56. 13 times 4 is 52. All you have to do is compare the values of those two numbers to see which one is bigger. Oh, well, obviously 56 is bigger than 52, which means 8 over 13 is the greater fraction between those two. 8 over 13 is bigger than 4 over 7. Okay? So just cross multiplying up and comparing those two products. So let's use the same example um, above. I'm just going to write this for clarity. That is the bigger fraction, all right? 5 over 12 versus 3 over 8. Again, two pretty uncommon uh, fractions. They have different denominators. You know, I don't want to find a common denominator and equivalent fractions. I'm going to use my cross multiplying and figure out which one's larger. Again, go up. 8 times 5 is 40. 12 times 3 is 36. 40 is larger than 36, which means 5 over 12 is the larger fraction between these two. So that's how you can use that to compare fractions. Let's look at how you can use a similar trick um, with one extra step to add or subtract fractions. All right, so we have an a couple examples. Determine the sum or difference uh, below. And so, again, one of these is much easier than the others. We have the first example, which says 3 elevenths plus 5 elevenths. So with adding and subtracting fractions, what you really need to happen is you need to have common denominators, which means they have to be the same. If they're the same, you can just add the numerators and keep the denominator the same. 3 plus 5 is 8, which means the sum of these is 8 over 11. Super easy. That's fine. No problem. Let's look at the next example below in red. 2 over 7 minus 1 over 5. I can't do anything with this until I find common denominators and then equivalent fractions and all that. But I really don't want to have to do that. Um, I want to use a trick to find out the answer a little bit easier. So here's the trick. <clears throat> it involves a couple of multiplying things and cross products, but it's, it's pretty, pretty nifty once you actually practice it. To find the common denominator, what you can do is basically multiply the two denominators together. So I'm going to multiply these together. <clears throat> 7 times 5 is 35. Okay. And then, just like in the last example, I'm going to use my cross product, which is 5 times 2, which is 10, and then 7 times 1, which is 7. Now, all I need to do is basically subtract the top two numbers, 10 minus 7. Well, 10 minus 7 is 3. 35 is going to stay the same. This is actually the difference between those two fractions. So, just using... The, the product of the bottom and then the cross product of the other two. So let's look at applying that rule to the last example. 5 over 12 minus 3 over 8. That's a pretty uncommon you know, it's a subtraction problem. Um, 12 and 8, finding common denominators can be a little tricky, but if I just multiply them together, 
12 times 8 is going to be 96. And then I can use the cross product to find the other parts. 8 times 5 is 40. And 12 times 3 is 36. All right. Now I just need to find the difference between 40 and 36. That's going to be 4. 4 over 96. One of the things you want to do when you have the difference or um, addition of fractions is always simplify your fractions. This isn't quite simplified, so I want to go ahead and simplify it. One of the things you need to do with simplifying fractions is find a common factor. Um, using a previous video that I had on divisibility rules, I know that I can find numbers that would divide into both 4 and 96. I know that actually 4 will go into each of these numbers. 4 divided by 4 is going to be 1. 96 divided by 4 is actually 24. And this is completely simplified, um, which means this is the actual final answer of 5 twelfths minus 3 eighths. So I hope this helps when you get to adding and subtracting fractions or even comparing fractions, um, especially the ones where the denominators are not the same. So again, thanks for watching and check out the next videos that we were posting. If you feel like after you're watching my videos, you think you may still need some extra practice in the classroom, you want to take classes with us, visit our website at www.gedyes.com. It'll take you right to this website and you can find locations on where our classes are being offered. If you live in one of our you know, neighboring counties, you can definitely visit our website, uh, GEDS.com, and you can click on this link down here, FDOE Adult Educational Contacts. This will list the different contacts of the adult ed programs in the counties throughout the state of Florida. So you don't necessarily have to be in Palm Beach County to take advantage of adult and community ed classes. If you live in one of these counties, reach out to these people and they'll get you set up with classes in their county. Thanks again for watching.